what I want to teach you here is how to implement the shift register using pass transistors. It's a very, very simple thing. We already know this. Let's take a pass transistor NMOS, give it a clock phi, connect an inverter. Why have we connected an inverter? I'll just quickly tell you. Phi bar, again an inverter. I beg your pardon there. Again an NMOS or a pass transistor and an inverter. So, see what's going to happen. Let's say I have an input A. When phi is equal to 1, let's name all the pass transistors also N1, N2, N3, and N4. When phi is equal to 1, N1 and N3 are on, correct? The output of N3 would be some garbage. So this inverter output is also going to be some garbage. So let's say we don't know the output here. At that point of time, because N1 is also on, the output here, pass transistor, right? So whatever is at the input, it will pass, would be A. And the inverter will make it A bar. Remember at that point of time, this is off and this is also off. So it does not take any input. Sooner, phi will go to zero. That means phi bar will go to one. At that point of time, N2 and N4 turns on. N4 does not have a logical input, it has garbage. So the final output would be still garbage. However, N2 has a logical input, so it passes A bar here, and the output of the inverter becomes A, correct? So here it is A. This is the first cycle, correct? Where my A has gone from here to here. If I take my output here, in one clock cycle, I could transmit my A across. Now again phi will become 1, again N1 and N3 will turn on, correct? N1 will take a new input which is say B, N3 will absorb A and produce an A bar here, correct? So A bar at the output of N3, this is the second clock cycle mind you, this was the first clock cycle and now again when phi goes to 0, N2 and N4 turns on, so N2 will take B bar because B was passed and this inverted got B bar, so B bar came at the input of N2. And at the input of N4 was A bar, which because phi bar is 0, phi bar is 1, phi is 0, will pass this A bar here, which will get inverted and I'll get an output A. So I was able to transmit or transfer or shift my A to the output. So here we just saw that I can shift my inputs from left to right by using a combination of pass transistors and inverters. And this is nothing but my dynamic shift register. Why we call it dynamic? Because we know that there are capacitors present here. We studied DRAM and we studied chart leakage also. And what's going to happen is when this transistor is off, technically the capacitor has to hold its value. But we know that because of the problem of chart leakage, the capacitor might lose out on its value. And hence we need to follow the refresh mechanism. And hence this term or this circuit where the chart tends to get leak off and we might lose out on the value is nothing but a dynamic circuit it's a shift register we saw the phenomena of dynamic circuits so it's nothing but a dynamic shift register so very simple let's quickly go ahead and make a static one we know that we need to just connect inverters in the feedback loop and then it becomes static we have already seen that for deep flip flop as well let's quickly go ahead and make it so this is my phi correct this is my inverter this is my inverter this is my NMOS which will operate on phi bar. We are drawing exactly the same circuit which we drew for D flip flop. This is phi which goes to, sorry, this is NMOS which will have an input opposite to this guy. This guy will also have an input opposite to this guy. So we have already seen the working of this circuit when we studied D flip flop. So I'm not going into the details of it. You can recollect it and you will understand that this circuit will help us in avoiding the problem of charge leakage and hence this circuit is nothing but a static circuit. Now if someone asks you to implement the same using transmission gates, it's very very simple. You just need to connect a PMOS transistor in parallel with an input which is opposite to the NMOS transistor. So this would be phi bar, this would be phi, remember this is PMOS, phi, phi bar. Working we have already seen so I'm not getting into details of it. The idea of understanding this cliff was to understand in simple language that a register is a combination of flip-flops. There are different types of shiftings which happens in a register. Left shift, right shift, serial shift, serial input, serial output, serial input, parallel output, parallel input, parallel output, so on and so forth. Currently, we are not getting into details of any of those. We have just seen a simple shift operation serially and for that we implemented a combination of deep flip-flops we saw that all the different styles of implementation can be done because we already know how to implement a deep flip-flop 
and we also saw how to implement this shift register in static style and dynamic style using past transistors. Hope you have followed. Stay tuned and thank you very much.